up with them. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me run some of this again. Okay. All right, well, now I'm not going to go through all that. I've got half that with one ammo, it looks like. Tell me, start again as far as fighting purposes. When, when did you get the call and what, what did you find out? I got the call about an uh, hour and a half, two hours ago from uh, Detective Gucci from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department saying that they have found Lizzie, she's safe. Uh, once they know more details and everything like that, that, they would give me a call, let me know about arrangements of picking her up and stuff, if they're going to bring her to us or if we got to go get her, which I really don't mind. I'm ready to take the blue smurf anywhere I got to go to get my daughter. Uh, what, uh, she's off her meds for 48 hours. Yes. yes. How is that affecting her? Um, we're not really sure. Um, we haven't been able to talk to her to, to, um, just to hear her voice. Um, usually when I talk to her, if I can talk to her, I can tell um, where... Um, just uh, just hearing her in her voice would you know tell me you know how she's doing you know and, and getting her back home and safe and getting her back on the routine that she needs to be on is, is our main concern. When did you first know about some of these some of this stuff going on between the two of them? That you um, we've been, we've known for a while um, and we just you know kept laying you know guide you know guide rules down and lines and both of them across it and it just came to a point to where you know what. Um, it's just too much for us. We can't handle all this. And to us, our child has changed um, a 360 degree um, compared to what she was. And then when you came into her life, and it was just like, you have to go. We want our child to be back the way that she was, not the way that you've turned her to be. What about the cell phones? You were saying that neighborhood um, the, cell phones. He would actually pay neighborhood kids um, in the neighborhood to give her cell phones. Um, and to pass along to her and every time that we would get um, a cell phone and see it on her um, we would constantly you know ask her about it she would literally throw a fit um, and then we're like you have to give it to us we have to see it and before that we could get to it um, she would literally break it to where we couldn't see the messages see the phone calls nothing so basically he was he was already moved out but he was just coming into the subdivision and yes doing giving the phones to, yes. to, to yes. pass them out, basically. Yes. yes. What was the last contact you had with him? last contact I had with him was uh, at, when he moved out. Okay. And that was the last time I've talked to him and the last time I've seen him. And that was back in January? Yes. Yeah. What do you know about his history? I know he's got a long criminal history of aggravated assault, deadly weapons, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I know he's been in prison several times uh, and everything. What, now you said he was originally from Chicago? Yes. Yes. What, uh, you said... Uh, as far as him getting down there, he didn't have transportation. Kind of tell me about that. We um, feel that he we, would just make any way to get to wherever he needed to go so that Liz wouldn't be coming home because he's so obsessed with her that he would go to great lengths to make sure that, you know, he either took her across the border or he took her out of the state so no one can get to her. I mean, that's just the way that his mind was working. Now you said he did have some gang ties? Yes. What type of uh, activity was that? Um, th um, from my understanding, he was with the Italian um, mob family. Um, and when everything started going um, haywire for him around here, um, him pulling the gun out on the neighbors and doing stuff like that, um, the big boss of the family was like, we're coming and getting you. You need to get out of there. We're going to hire, you know, attorneys. We're going to do all this. And then it was just like, from our understanding, we all thought at all this time he was gone. And then we've just been hearing from everything in the neighborhood that he's been in and out of the neighborhood, staying in other people's trailers, um, sneaking in at night, um, leaving during the day. If he didn't leave near during the day, then he would stay inside so no one would see him. So he, was he in pro had problems? Did he have problem, law enforcement problems here while he was here too, or not? Yes. Uh, he basically, about the only time he had law enforcement problems here was when he pulled the gun out on the neighbors and everything like that. Uh, our neighbor filed a uh, sexual assault bill on him about the incident with Elizabeth and everything. So, you know. Yeah. What about the? Yesterday, you uh, were able to make a phone call yesterday. Tell me about that phone call. Uh, I made a phone call at uh, 11, uh, 10 30, 11 o'clock yesterday uh, morning, and after we found the number, uh, I called the phone. Lizzie answered the phone, so right then I knew that she was with him. Uh, I do not know if she hung up or if he snatched the phone from her or what. Uh, after that, I made several attempts to try to call the number back, it just went to voicemail, and then about 3, 3.30 yesterday afternoon, he called us and turned around and told us that uh, we would never see Lizzie again, uh, where we're going and everything like that. You don't have an ID to go across the checkpoints and come get me. Basically kind of talking, daring you that he was going to go across. Yes. Yeah, he was trying to test my patience to see how far I would actually go to come get her. What, uh, I mean, now hearing that she's okay, what's, how's it make? Uh, relief, 100% relief. relief.
Well, not 100% outside 50 until she's home and then it'd be 100%. Until she is in our driveway and home and safe in our house, that's going to be to where we will be 100% okay. Until then, we're, we're just hoping that she gets here quickly. Now, you were doing a home remodeling business. He worked with you for a while? Yes. How long was that? Uh, about a month. Okay. And then that's when everything started getting slow after that. Okay. All right. Now, is this sister? Yes, this is, is her youngest me? sister. Kimmy. Kim, tell me, what, what do you think about all this? Uh, I think that Nino did the wrong thing and that when the first time I moved in, I felt really uncomfortable because I could feel something in my stomach and that when I did, I knew something wasn't right. And so when he went to take off with my sister, I, when the day that she got kidnapped, I didn't really feel anything. I wasn't emotional or anything because I, I thought she would come back. But then the day that I went to school and I came back home, my dad had come pick me up from school yesterday. I started crying because I thought she would have came home, but she didn't. And so... I just really want her to come home because I love her so much, and it, it's not the same without her. And what's your name again? Kimmy. K-I-M-M-Y. And your last name? Rex, R-E-X. Okay, all right. And your name again, sir? Patrick. Patrick. Rex. Rex. Jennifer Black. Jennifer Black, okay. So just kind of waiting now, waiting game. Yes. Yes, sir. Are they going to bring her back, or are you going to have to go get her, or what? I have no clue. Uh, I've done called my family and everything like that. They said if we have to go get her, they're, they'll be here in a heartbeat, and we'll drive to go get her if we have to. All right, thanks. Good Thank luck, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Hi. Uh,